Hello YouTube, this is a video explaining why propane is a better fuel source to have as an emergency backup than kerosene. I live in Ocean County, New Jersey, and we always get hit with nor'easters or hurricanes every year. Most notably, Hurricane Sandy just totally annihilated New Jersey in 2012. And the year before that, Hurricane Irene came into New Jersey and did a lot of damage as well. And in both of those major storms, I was out of power for several days. Let me begin with uh, availability with uh, propane and say that it's easily found at most gas stations, major retailers, and even convenience stores, liquor stores. With kerosene, it's only available at some gas stations and limited in supply at the retail stores. Now, the one thing I learned about propane during Hurricane Sandy is that it can be dispensed and purchased even when the power grid is down. With kerosene, it's definitely harder to dispense and purchase it when there's no power. And the reason is very simple, because you can take your empty propane tank and go to one of these exchange stations and swap out uh, your empty tank for a full one. With kerosene, it doesn't work that it doesn't work that way. You can't take your empty kerosene can and go to a place and swap it out for a full one. So when the grid goes down, so does the ability to pump fuel. Um, I had no problem getting propane during Hurricane Sandy. I had a 40 pound cylinder that I didn't touch and I was pretty much working off the 20 pounder because I knew I was able to uh, get propane. Everyone had it, Home Depot had it, Lowe's, so it was an issue to get it. And if I absolutely had to, and people were doing this during Hurricane Sandy, I don't recommend it, but they were going around stealing propane tanks from people's uh, grills in their backyards. Now that's the kind of thing that's gonna get you shot or beaten up, but you know, if it's a matter of survival, you know, you can still get propane during a major outage. You, you know, I don't recommend stealing it, but at least it's available for you to steal with kerosene. You really can't steal it because nobody has it really. Next, we get into pricing. Now, on the wholesale and the gas station end at the pump, they're pretty similar. If you call up and wanted a fuel delivery, propane and kerosene are about $3 per gallon. At the gas station, propane, you know, I fill up my tanks. They, they charge four to four fifty per gallon depending where I go. At, at the gas station, propane is about fifty cents cheaper than kerosene. Kerosene at the pump is about four fifty to five dollars per gallon. Now on the retail end is where you see a big difference in price. Uh, propane is about five bucks per gallon if you buy it at a place that doesn't commonly have it. Um, with kerosene if you buy it retail, like at Tractor Supply or Lowe's, it's about 8 to $10 per gallon. It's also important for me to point out that at the gas stations, you're not always buying K1 kerosene. Uh, K1 is clear. Uh, the stuff I see dispensed at the pump is uh, dyed red, and that's usually K2. For all I know, that could be heating oil. I have no way of telling the difference because... Um, Number two and uh, K2 kerosene are, are virtually identical. Here's an example of uh, retail pricing of kerosene if you had to buy it on the shelf. This is our tractor supply. It's $40 for a five gallon pail. But notice in the red box here, it says this item is not currently available for pickup in store. Please check store availability uh, to see where it's in stock. So now I have to go on a uh, search and rescue mission just to find out who has kerosene in case I need it. So here's another place, Ace. They, uh, they have kerosene here. Look at the price. It's about $10 per gallon. It's almost $50 for a five gallon pail. Free store pickup, but the estimated pickup date is Tuesday, March 5th, if you can see that. Today is Saturday, March 2nd. So I have to wait 72 hours to get kerosene and if I absolutely needed it I would be out of luck and if you look at the bottom it says this product cannot be shipped to home probably because it's a hazardous material so 
this takes me right back to availability, how difficult it can be to get, especially during an outage. Now we'll talk about storage and management. With propane, there's less of a risk of a uh, spill or a leak. You do not have direct contact when handling propane. Kerosene, there's definitely more risk of a, of a spill or a leak, and it does require direct contact when handling. If one of these propane cylinders falls over or gets knocked down, whatever, uh, it's not it's not going to spill anything out. And these kerosene uh, drums or even just a, a five gallon blue gas can, if you knock it over, uh, you're going to have some type of spillage. Now, anytime you have to refill a kerosene a heater, uh, it's not easy. Usually you have to use these stupid little siphon things or a big gas can with either a funnel or a long nozzle like this. But the problem is in these uh, kerosene heater tanks, the uh, the fuel opening is about, a, is about as wide as a Gatorade bottle. So it is a little difficult to fill up uh, the kerosene tanks without spilling anything too. And that's another challenge. It's almost like playing operation, you know, the game where you have to remove the body part without setting off the buzzer. It's like performing laparoscopic surgery with these siphons and funnels and gas cans. And if you get any type of spillage on your clothes or on the carpet, it's gonna stink for a long time. You could run your clothes through the wash two, three times before you get the smell out. If you spill kerosene on your carpet, forget it. With propane, all you really have to do is just turn the valve off, unscrew the hose, and then uh, reconnect your new tank, and then turn the valve back on, and you're good to go. Now we get into heating and cooking now. Kerosene does have a little bit of an advantage here in terms of BTUs. Now, I will say that kerosene heaters, they throw off some nice heat. I've grown up with kerosene heaters, very nice warming heat. But here's the problem. They need wicks and uh, routine maintenance. And the other problem is that uh, these heaters, they have a fixed heat output and you really can't adjust uh, the heating level. These square heaters are 10,000 BTUs and these round heaters, again, they put out some nice heat. They're 23,000 BTUs, but they have to run full throttle all the time. So you can't really adjust the settings and you're gonna be consuming the same amount of fuel, which is about uh, one gallon of kerosene about every eight hours. So that means, you know, a five gallon can of kerosene is, is uh, probably not gonna be able to get you through a full weekend. At least with a propane heater, even though um, it's less BTUs, it's about 43,000 less BTUs, you don't have wicks or maintenance. Uh, this uh, Mr. Heater Big Body does have uh, a variable uh, heat setting for better efficiency and comfort. You can either turn it to low, medium, or high, which is either 4,000, 9,000, or 18,000 BTUs. This is the one I have, by the way. I'm really happy with it. It burns clean and uh, I can get um, almost two weeks out of a 30 pound cylinder. Now what I love are these people who say, oh, I can cook on a kerosene heater. I can bake uh, kerosene cornbread. I cook kerosene flapjacks, shrimp and kerosene, kerosene and potatoes, broiled kerosene, all that nonsense. Well, if you have a propane grill, you can do that as well. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy, I had uh, no problem cooking. Uh, I cooked hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken. Now, I don't know about you, but I would much rather eat food cook or, cooked off of a propane grill than a kerosene heater like this. You have to remember that uh, kerosene, when it burns, lets off uh, soot, sulfur, all kinds of uh, toxins. So... Uh, I'm not I'm not convinced that I would be eating food cooked with a kerosene heat unless I absolutely had to. So that's another thing to consider with uh, with propane. Now that 
leads me into some environmental advantages with propane because propane is clean burning, no harmful emissions, even indoors. Kerosene is clean burning, but only if you buy that expensive K1 kerosene, the clear stuff. Propane has no CO2 emissions because it's not a greenhouse gas. Kerosene is a hydrocarbon, and when it burns, it releases CO2, and plus, you know, the sulfur and soot and carbon monoxide. And if propane is accidentally discharged into the environment, there's no harm to any ecosystem or organism. And uh, on the other hand, with kerosene, it's extremely harmful to ecosystems or organisms if it's accidentally discharged. You know, getting back to storage with those 55-gallon uh, drums, if you're going to store that much kerosene, you might as well just get heating oil and uh, get a storage tank and do that. And now, you know, you're running an environmental risk of a spillage. And God forbid you spill uh, kerosene or heating oil on your property. You're going to DEFCON 3 to clean everything up. Uh, you got to get the uh, DEP, the EPA, the ABC, all those agencies. And, and that, uh, that record will stay on your uh, title of your house for a, for a long, long time. It's almost like being on the Megan's Law sex offender registry if you have uh, any type of oil contamination on your property. So just to summarize the advantages of propane, it has abundant availability, even off the grid. The pricing is better, especially on the retail end. It's safer to store and handle. Uh, it's definitely more versatile for heating and cooking. And in my opinion, the most important is that it's environmentally friendly. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you for watching.